Cheering at pro wrestling shows in Japan is back, and 2023 is already shaping up to be a big year in the history of pro res. That's why you should listen to the Emerald Flow Show. From the Royal Road to the Green Mat, Paul and Gerard take you into the world of All Japan Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Noah. Not only do we analyze events, but we examine business, who is getting over, what angles are working, or not. Occasionally, we take a look at other Japanese promotions like DDT and Zero One. So if you're looking for more coverage of the world of Japanese wrestling, check out the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, available on all of your favorite podcast apps. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Super Jcast. I'm Joel, joined by Daniel McDonald. It is Wednesday, the 8th of May, 2024. This is episode 309, and we can only talk about one thing, Damon. Marky, thoughts on the Toronto Maple Leafs, Oh, Damon. Jesus Christ. Well, Marky, just like every other fucking year, the same exact thing happened again. Um, they take it to Game 7. Um without their best player, mind you, uh, and without their goaltender, who was playing pretty well. And uh, Saturday came, and the third period, still no score, no goal. So, of course, I'm uh, nervous as fuck. And uh, they score, leave score first, like six minutes left in the game, and I'm like, oh, my God, let's fucking go. A minute later, Joel, Boston scores, tie game. We're going to overtime. Playoff hockey overtime means you play until someone scores. It's not like regular season where they do like a convent condensed version, and uh, you know there, there's a winner, but the game you know relatively ends quickly to decide it. Nope, they play and they play and they play and they play. Boston scores, game over, series over. That's that. <laughs> First round done. <laughs> See, I did. I last I heard you tied it up in three three. So I yeah. thought it was going to be like, oh yes, we got, got got a chance now. Big game coming up. But I didn't realize that game had already been played and you <laughs> lost. So you, you're all sad now. So I'm sorry. That's all right. So, I mean, I was sad for that night. Um, Cheryl was like, she was cool. You know what? She knows how to handle me in those situations. Um, and she was quiet. You know, she didn't say a fucking peep. Uh, and then she's like, um, do you want to, you're right. You want to go to bed or do you want to stay up? You got to cool off a little bit. And I was like, no, let's go to bed. Went to bed and I'm just kind of, she knew I was just fucking still. In, and she was just like, I'm really sorry. I know you go through this every fucking year. It's like, like I, I do. And there's, you know, millions of others that do too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just a thing. So I'm sure there'll be some changes. Um, they have a they have a presser on Friday. Um, and I think, you know, I think it starts with a head coach, new head coach. And I think uh, upper management there will probably be some, at the very least, some shifting around assets. And then in the offseason, Joel, like, look, uh, I really like this team a lot. And I have from the jump, and I was been a, a supporter of – the idea of these four or five guys being like the, the keys. We got to break it up. We got to break it up. We have too much money tied into those players and they're very good players, Joel, but in the playoffs, they just fucking disappear. And it's been that way for, I mean, countless years. So I guess the, what's that? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Well, I'm going to say we got to break it up. We got to, we got to do something and we'll get some good assets. Again, yeah, I hope they don't like like there's been plenty of times, Joel, where it's like, OK, the end of the season. Like, no, we were committed to our team and we're committed to this vision and blah, 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 blah. and I'm drinking the Kool-Aid along with it. After a while, you just kind of go, oh, OK, and they would make small changes, Joel. But like, again, we don't really have a stud goaltender. We don't have stud defenseman like our best defenseman is a puck carrying defenseman and he's really good. 
but he can't do everything. Like he can't be everything defensively. He can't be the the, the guy who's going to fucking muscle somebody in front of the net. He's not going to be a guy who's going to have a big booming shot from the point, to, and so other players can get like trashy deflection goals. And that's how you score in the playoffs. Like like the one thing I definitely have learned in the past couple of years is that our team is constructed for the regular season where it's in the middle of February and we're playing Columbus and we can just fucking use our skill and dominate, right? In the playoffs, it's much grimier, it's greasier, it's fucking sandpaper, and we really don't have that team. Um, and a lot of goals are are generated by big shots from the point, rebounds, away you go. It's not deke, 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 backhand, woohoo, we're in. And that's the Leafs. To a large degree, they always look for the pretty pass. They always look for the extra pass. And it's like, you can't play that way in the playoffs. Anyway, that's the Leafs. Um, while we're here, uh, so one out of two ain't bad, right, Joel? <laughs> you, uh, how's, how's the, how are the Gunners? How are we looking so far? Yeah, we're, we're still top of the league with City having a game in Herdon. So most likely outcome we're looking here is that um, both us and City win all our remaining games and City are champions because the teams they have to play are in spectacularly bad form at the moment. Like they, They've got yeah. Fulham coming up where, we, of course, we've got our tattoo bet yes. going on. And I think Fulham have lost their last 15 games against City. Uh, they've got nothing to play for, so they're pretty much on the beach. Uh, then they've got Spurs after that, and Spurs have pr- pretty much blown their chances of making the top four. So they've got nothing to play for. And like honestly, uh, they got West Ham on the last day of the season, and West Ham also crap, also nothing to play for. Mm-hmm. And even if these teams did have something to play for, even if like you, you know, lined up their grannies behind in, in the dressing room and said, "Right, we're going to execute them if you don't win," even if they played their hearts out, I still don't think they'd be able to stop City from mm-hmm. destroying them because City are just a really amazing team. So I'm not expecting anything. But again, there's 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 the tattoo. Excited to look forward to. I did. I said I, I had a, a, a terrible dream last night that Uh-oh. Fulham were holding City to a draw, and then City scored a last-minute winner, and I was very upset in the dream. Um, but and, because I've been watching like old highlights of similar situations where it's been like a couple of years ago, Liverpool in a similar situation to us, where they were hoping for City to drop points on the last day of the season, and City were on this day they were at home no yeah at home to Aston Villa and they went 2 nil down to Villa with like 20 minutes left so all the Liverpool fans were like oh my god we're gonna do it City have fucked it up 20 minutes left two goals down they're playing like shit but then of course they managed to dig out and and win 3-2 in the end which even as a neutral I was sitting watching that thinking like this is some bullshit what how are they (laughs) how do they keep doing this so uh yeah, there's probably going to be something like that. I, I'd almost prefer it if City had just like steamrolled all the opposition as yeah. they have been doing. Just like, for example, they, they were playing Wolves at the weekend after we'd beaten uh, Bournemouth, and so you know, sitting there thinking, oh, you know, maybe Wolves might pull off an upset. And then, like, I check my phone to see how it's going. It's like five nil to City. So I was like, okay, you know, at least they, at least they're not getting my hopes up on this. They're just being like ruthlessly efficient and making sure there is no hope whatsoever. So I prefer that. I just I'll be very annoyed if they sort of dictate us and you know pretend like they're going to lose or drop points and then pull out a last minute win. That that will be very very annoying. I'd, I'd rather yeah. they just like batter everyone and, and not give us that hope in the first yeah. place. I'd rather have lost. I'd rather have been just tossed out. You know, four four games of one. You know, just 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 destroyed as opposed to having a taste of hope, you know what I mean? A little bit of, Oh, maybe they can do this. Maybe they can pull this off. Uh, yeah. I, I trust me. I know the feeling dude. Just, I don't know. You're in a good spot. I know you need a lot of help, but again, they got, they have to play the games and you never fucking know. You never fucking know. I, it's funny. Cause I was watching, I don't even know what I was watching. I had something on and you know how like the, the bottom of the screen, they'll have, you know, the ticker with, you know, sports scores and all. And for, for I saw one. What was it? Crystal Palace against uh, Manchester United. But I got Manchester United and City mixed <laughs> up, <laughs> and I got oh, so <laughs> I got so excited for you. I was like, I was ready to get. I was ready to call you and be like, Oh my God, holy shit! Um, 
but then uh, the realization that uh, nope, city is not united. <laughs> they are not the same. Yes, although that was very very funny as well. So <laughs> yes, I yes, a lot of enjoyment from that. Uh, all right, you, I mean, again, you're in the mix. Got to feel good about it. You need a little help. Fingers crossed. Toes crossed. And uh, yeah, I mean, listen. I hope you get a tattoo. I think it'll be the best tattoo you've ever had in your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it'll, it'll be amazing. Every time I see that, I'll be happy and yes. smile. You'll have a great giggle. Room. Yeah, you have a little giggle. You'll be like, oh, I can't believe I fucking did that. That's that's hilarious. What a bit. And but but you know, you got yourself a fucking championship. You got yourself the fucking top of the league. Can't ask for anything more than that. And again. Just to be clear, the tattoo is not going to be monstrous. You could get it as small as you want. It could be a fucking, you know, as long as it, it's cl- it's clear that it says AEW, I don't give a shit. You've satisfied. And again, I, I will pay for said tattoo. Just uh, look around uh, look around the area. See what shops make you comfortable. <laughs> Prepare for it. So you can just uh, saddle on up into that chair and zzz, get some ink. I'll do that with a smile on my face. Um, hey, we should say congratulations to Antonio because why is that? Uh, sporting, I think they're his team. They won the Portuguese league after ah. Benfica lost to Famalicao. I, I'm definitely mispronouncing that. Uh, and, and he's followed that up with a question. Now, this this question goes in a few different directions, Damon. So okay. stick with it. Uh, so second is also to you, more to Damon, since his team, the Maple Leafs, correct, which are underdog, given they didn't win a Stanley Cup since the 60s, right? My question, what is an his thoggers on by Leverkusen <laughs> winning the Bundesliga? I thought he was going to be asking you about uh, the Maple Leafs, but no, he's asking you about a completely different team. Bund- team is, are we talking about the German soccer league <laughs> Bundesliga? The German soccer league Bundesliga, an NHL team underdog win trophy comparations how he felt when that underdog team since he always brags about maple leafs not winning stuff like spurs bragging (laughs) or even england since uh also they haven't won trophies since that stolen world cup in 1966 in which they robbed us when portugal when you say we won the tournament thoggers on my questions well first of all let's 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 unpack the 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 stealing of uh what was the uh, we're talking world cup uh, from Portugal is that is that is that an accurate assessment? I, I know you weren't there for that. You were born <laughs> like right after that, I'm sure. But uh, can you can we verify that at all, Joel? Uh, that sounds about right. It, it, it's really <laughs> yeah. about, I mean, that's not that's not the narrative we learn <laughs> as sure. English children. But uh, yeah, I, I bet there's a there's a, an air of authenticity about that. I mean, historically, all the good stuff in England has been stolen from other countries. So, good yeah, point, good point. Yeah. Hey, listen, our Thanksgiving is is, is uh, pretty, if you really dig deep, it's really not that great of a holiday, but uh, we we tend to enjoy it here in the States. We'll find a way to... Yep. to, to uh, ever been to the British Museum? I stolen, have. Stolen, yes. Stolen, stolen, right. stolen. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think that's where I saw the um, Rosetta Stone, if I'm not mistaken. Piece of the says Rosetta Stone. Uh, yeah, I can't, yeah. And as a matter of fact, there was um, a lot of uh, Egyptian artifacts. I was like, hmm, pretty weird that you got a hold of all that. But okay. Hey, listen, what do I know? I'm just a visitor. Uh, I love it. We're just looking after them. We're just, <laughs> just resting <laughs> in, our, in our account. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, we want the world to see. We want the world to see it. So, you know, that's that's the excuse. Um, all right, so that's that. Um, what else uh, did, did he ask here? I don't know. I don't know anything about Bundesliga. I know it's the German thing, the German soccer league. So I, I couldn't tell you anything about it. So you, I don't even know what the question was. I'm not bragging about the Leafs. It's certainly not a brag. It's not a humble brag. It's not a. It's a fucking. It's 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 a it's a scarlet letter <laughs> that I have to wear. <laughs> and and, and uh, there doesn't seem to be any uh, hope in sight. Um, uh, what else is he asking, Joe? I, I have no idea. He, I, I, I got to be honest with you. My eyes glazed over. Okay. Right. <laughs> We've got a lot to talk about today. So uh, I'm going to move on to the the biggest news for us New Japan fans. Uh, and this comes a uh, question from Multiverse A says, I know it might take the entire time you have allotted, but could you list some of the best moments of Tangaloa's illustrious New Japan career? Also, if Hunter is listening, who else would you like him to sign away to become a <laughs> WWE superstar? So, yeah, how did you feel? Seeing Tangela <laughs> pop up in WWE because I hate to be mean, but I was doing cartwheels in my oh, house. Yeah. That was me joking. And he nearly like... fucked up. He was I know, to come and out. The ring. Well, then the referee had to pull himself out. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, listen, you can't, you know, uh, he's the same guy. You know what I mean? Like he's that, that that's not going to change. Um, boy, you know what? I, if I'm being 100% honest, um, there aren't many, all right? We, we know this, but there were moments with G.O.D. as a tag team and, you know, that, that weren't completely horrible and they weren't, they weren't even bad. They were, it was, it was, you know, very, um, it's probably they, good. They beat in 2016, the 2016 yeah. World Tag League final against GBH was their yeah. best match. And they yeah. never, they never topped that. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think back like fucking G ones. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I remember when they, de- when he debuted and it was just like, Oh, okay. All right. Um, I think the more the, look injuries play a factor. There's a lot of things to play a fucking factor, but yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to go down as, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, as the kids like to say, a Mount Rushmore of fucking uh, New Japan for wrestling. That's for sure. But who else can we uh, have? Some, I mean, look, we got we got some we got some current tag champions. I wouldn't mind Hunter uh, making a phone call or two. I yeah, can't. the honorary Tongan himself, Chase yeah. Owens, he would fit like a glove. Like a fucking glove. Um, but it, it is amazing. I will say this. While it, it does give us a little bit of a chuckle, um, good for them, man. They're making, they're making some money. They're, they're instant stars. And that's something to be said. You know, it was like, as much as we want to fucking just giggle about it and like, boom. They're in the mix of of big time programs for that company on big time TV. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I know they have a, I know they have a, a spot reserved for Hikaleo. You know, they got a little uh, <laughs> a spot at the table, just waiting. Um, but good for them, you know. They cashed in, and, and especially when you consider the fact that you know. Tongalo is probably not in the best physical condition. Um, no, how could you? <laughs> I know, I know, it's shocking. So you know, if he's able to, you know, work maybe a little bit easier in the ring, and you know, he could do a little walk and brawl stuff, be a tough guy. That's all, you know, and 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 make some money at the same time. Good for him. Good for him. Uh, but yeah, that was funny. That was funny. Right, well, we're in big trouble here for this episode because uh, the New Japan website is down. Oh, no. Which is usually what I use for everything. So I'm going to have to use something else. I'll have to use Cage Merch. But okay. um, this is this is not good. I mean, these all, all these New Japan websites. We've got a question from Daryl says, can we please talk about the shit show that is the new NJPW world site? The reliability, search functionality, and archive selection have all taken a nosedive for a 30% increase in price. What yep. was the plan here? This is shrinkflation at the most heinous level. Uh, I mean, I don't know if the most heinous level. I think U.S. housing prices are uh, a bit of an abomination, but okay. Um, that being said, in this pro wrestling world that we live in, it is horrible. And you want a fun fact, Joel? I canceled my subscription. Canceled it. Because I could wow. not. Because I because one, wow. I could not. It just frustrated the fuck out of me trying to navigate like I'm not like I I know the joke is I'm this old fucking fossil, but uh, I kind of know my way around a computer or two, and and a fire stick is eh, pretty good. Uh, horrible, just like non-responsive, hard to find. Half the shit ain't even there. And what the, you know the archive stuff you got to wait fucking next year. Why I have no idea, but okay. Uh, I just can't. I, I just got so fed up with it. And here's the thing too. Like, like I have very good internet speed at my house. Like, 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 I, like I'm paying for the best because uh, of a lot of what I need to do work wise and everything else wise. Um, so it's not the internet and it just, it'll buffer and it'll, it, it I don't know. <sighs> I don't, I don't like it. So yeah, like, like we had a conversation of, okay, where can we cut a couple bucks here and there, you know, save for this, save for that. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll find a way to get the shows. I'll find the shows. 
So that's what that's what they're doing. <laughs> that's I mean, that's what they're doing. They're uh, that's what they're doing. That's this is this is real time. What's happening in in a lot of cases where people are just frustrated with something as simple as their their dumb app and their dumb website, uh, and they they've had enough. They they've thrown in the towel. Um, yeah, I've thrown in the towel. I mean, that really seems like a, a watershed moment for the Jcast. That one of the co-hosts cancelling their subscription. <laughs> to AJKW World. Um, I know. Yeah. I, I know. can't say I blame you. I mean, it's... It, it's hard. Seriously, on a scale of 1 to 10, what what is the new site like for you? Uh, I don't like it at all. I don't like the way that the shows are split up into different chapters. Matches, so I have yeah, yeah. to... Yeah, chapters. So I, I can't seem to... I, maybe this is just me being stupid. I can't seem to find where I can just watch the whole show back to back. So I load up the show... And then when one match has finished, it's kicking me back to the the root menu, and then I've got to click on the next match that I want to watch. Like, what? Why have they done that? It just yeah. seems really counterintuitive. And then each time I do that, then I've got to click and change the language again and, and put it back up to double speed. And you know, it's just really inconvenient for me. <laughs> I know it really is. It's not. It's not great at all. Uh, and to have the audacity to raise prices, um, even if it's a dollar, even if it, or two or whatever it is. Like it's just like I don't know. Like nah. And and truth be told, aside from watching shows for this, like I'm not watching uh, like like it's hardly ever fired up anyway. Like it's like I, I'll hardly sit down at, at in the couch and be like, okay, let me just watch some random New Japan event. Like that r- never happened. Um, and yeah, it's just become a bit of a fucking burden. Um, so yeah, and it's weird. It, yeah. Trust me. It's weird because it's, uh, I mean, look, look, we'll say G1, uh, you know, I'll probably be back, but, um, like I remember when that was first announced and they, and the, the night they launched it, I remember like firing away, logging in, setting up an account, getting on. And I remember, uh, remember, I don't know if he's still active. I don't know. I don't know if he's still alive. Uh, that, what was it Sir Lariato or Senior Lariato? Remember him on Twitter? Yes, yeah, I remember him. He uh, made this kind of walkthrough of of how to set up an account because it was all in Japanese. Um, made a, I remember him making a little bit of a like a tutorial on that and like how to change your your billing information and stuff like that. I was on board, man. I was on board. I just I just could not do it anymore. So, yep. That's uh, that's that's where that is. So that's where that is. Well, let's move on to uh, talking about the shows wrestling Dontaku. So, yes. despite way of comparison, so last year it was a single show, uh, same venue, and the attendance was four thousand four hundred and eighty nine. So that was the show that was headlined by uh, Sanada against Hiromu. So they have 4,489 this time for the two nights. So the first night did half that, so 2,440. <sighs> and then the second night did slightly less than that 2023 wow. number, so 4,238. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Would you count that as a success, that cumulatively they've done sort of close to 7,000 rather than last year doing – four and a half thousand because they've run two nights i don't really know how to yeah how to analyze this i mean if you're just looking at well okay so let's put it this way for that one night that they had to rent the building and you know pay for hotels and you know all the other expenses that go along with running a pro wrestling show of that magnitude they had to do it twice right so you know and and to at the end of the day make the same amount of money uh I would think, and again, I don't know, I don't have access to their books, but I would think that the expenses of running two shows as opposed to one show and making the same amount of money, um, you would think that they would have, that they would have taken a loss, right? Um, yeah. If you're paying Nick Nemeth to wrestle two singles matches, then yeah, <laughs> right. right. I mean, that's, that's $150 right out, right off the top. <laughs> <laughs> but we can also say Sanada officially a bigger draw than John Moxley. 
Well, I think overall, I think I think people. We've said it a thousand times. Right? I think people in general, the 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 idea of this being a hot product is that's that's a fallacy. Two, um, even the the hardcore of hardcores are kind of passing on it. Like I know, I know for a fact, and it's not, and it's not the same person uh, you're thinking of. I'll just say that. But uh, other people in Japan. That are that are there now, currently, and their itinerary is. They did one pro wrestling show. It was not a New Japan show. It was at Korokin because they sent me a picture of where I signed the steps. <laughs> they they sent me that. I was like, ah, oh, it feels so good to have that there. I don't know why. Which promotion was it? I'm curious. Um, it might have been. That's a great question. I, you know Japan, what? I mean, they, I've heard very good stuff about what they're doing at the moment. You know, I have to send shoot off a text. Um, I don't know, and like, I'm going to be honest and be like, they they might have just gone to uh, the dome for a baseball game because that was a big that was a big focal point of the trip. Like, they were going to hit multiple stadiums for baseball. Um, they might have just gone there and just kind of went in Cork and, and up the steps. Just to just to do that, I didn't really. You know what? I didn't really ask. I assumed they went to a pro wrestling show, so maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't go to any. Um, my point being is that they would have been all over shows. And again, there's a, it is a big hike from Tokyo to fucking Fukuoka. But um, my point being is that like it, it's just not on the itinerary. Um, there's a lot of people like that that are just like. And again, we talked about. You know how the fan club usually that's a, a, a slam dunk tickets being bought and, and plenty available. Yeah, the, the, the royal seats they usually get. Yeah, up, don't they? I mean, I'm gonna say plenty, but like, like there there were availability um, where there usually isn't, and I think that's you know if you're signing up for, to be a fan club member, a fan club member, like you're going to shows and there's going to be you have a lot of fucking runway when it comes to good show average show great show you know they're in it they they got they got no problem sitting through it they're turning their back on it and it's like okay you know that's i I think to me that's a lot more telling than uh i'm gonna go wherever kenny omega goes or i'm gonna go because this product is on my television and it's easier for me to watch and it's in english and it's all the things that i like about pro wrestling i get to sing the songs I get to do the chants. I get to fucking do all, all of it. Um, like to me, that's less important than people in Japan. That again, fan club members are. Eh, it's not for me. Not for me. So, uh, to answer the question, yeah, I think getting the same amount of of technically tickets sold between two shows as it compared to one, uh, I don't think it's a good look. Uh, how did you experience this in terms of commentary? Because I've watched with English commentary, uh, and I'll just add as a caveat, I'm really happy to hear that apparently Walker Stewart will be back in Japan covering these shows from around the middle of Best of the Super Juniors because I thought, EL, was it ELP and, and Chris did the first night? I thought that was that was all right. But the, the show Jeff where Cobb. it was Jeff Cobb, oh my God, Jeff Jeff and Chris, Jesus, I mean, I'm not a commentator, so you know it's very easy for me to sit here and criticize. I don't know the first thing about commentary, but surely, like the golden rule is put over the wrestlers. Yeah. Whereas they, the pair of them, were just sort of mucking around, making jokes. Like one of the matches, the Lij match, they were just uh, goofing around about uh, Yota Suji's name being Eugene, and I was just like, "What the fuck am I listening to? What is going on here?" I mean. It's like it's like tuning into a New Japan Pro Wrestling podcast and getting twenty minutes of porn talk. <laughs> it's not like listening to us. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Um, all right, you know, it happened. What do you want from me, people? Come on. Um, like I and here's the thing too. Like like I did. Like it's not like we do it every fucking show. It was one show, people. Relax. 
<laughs> many people liked it, Damon. I'm not. Yeah, again, I'm not saying we do it every week, but there, there are people who enjoyed it. I mean, I'm glad they did, but uh, but but you know as well as I do why we did that. It just happened. We don't. It's not like we sat here. That was and in said, the show notes. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, talk to me about Riley Reed. You know, like that. No, it just happened. But yeah, they were. It was. That was not good. That was not good. Um, I, 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 I'm glad that that things got sorted out. Number one, um, to get Walker back because I mean, you could it, it, look whether you love the guy or hate the guy on commentary. Um, like after watching that last show, you, you're, you're. You know that the let's put it this way: you know the importance of someone being able to properly drive the fucking boat, right? And without that, that's what you get, right? You get fucking two guys cracking up at their own jokes. Okay, like for a dumb podcast, maybe that's entertaining. For a pro wrestling show, no. And I'll and I, listen. I'm going to say it, and I don't give a fuck. I'm at the end of my rope. Trust me. Uh, I, I honestly think that the idea of Chris Charlton being a lead commentator has run its course. I'm not into it at all. I feel like he has an absolute value to a broadcast without question. Um, I can appreciate the copious notes that he has in front of him. Um, you know, let's not pretend he's doing this all off, off, the, off the top of his fucking head, people. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Let me be very clear in that because I would have a, an encyclopedia in front of me. Uh, I can't even remember what I did fucking this morning, let alone 20 years ago in a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring. It's not it, 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 like his role is to add that that historic kind of fan perspective like to me that's what he's good at not that and that's what you get and here's the thing too I will also say this whoever he reports to or whoever the commentating team in general reports to if they do who knows right like they had to have heard that and been like what the fuck is happening like like, is, are there no checks and balances for the for the English commentating team? Do, or they just fucking run wild. Like, they just fucking, they have carte blanche uh, to do and say and whatever. Um, and that's the biggest gripe that wrestlers have. Like, I never really hear gripes about wrestlers to commentators. Very rarely. Very rarely. But the one thing that they demand is that they put over the wrestlers. Right, a they don't try to put themselves over. B they're trying to put over the wrestlers. C they're trying to put over the storylines and the angles and the, and the and the next shows and all of that. And that's just I don't know. I, that was I feel like that was once again two guys having a couple beers doing a fucking New Japan Pro Wrestling podcast. That's what it felt like. Um, and if if we sound anything like that, then fucking hit the leap because <laughs> it stinks. Right, well, let's uh, dig into the matches themselves. Um, honestly, I don't think there was anything of value in the undercard that's worth discussing. So I'm happy to just skip to uh, Jeff Cobb versus Zack Sabre Jr. unless you have any hot takes on the first, I don't know, six or so matches that they were. No, it was a lot of... It, was, uh, it, it did feel very meaningless, and I will be truthful in the sense that uh, my thumb hurt from hitting fast forward, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, or my mouse scrolling. Uh, disappointing. Like, like we knew when we read off that lineup, we were like, woof, eesh, eesh, whoosh. Yeah, and then there's 2,000 people in the building. So, well, Yeah, I mean, look, I feel like we are, as much as people don't want to admit, I feel like we are at a barometer. <laughs> we really are. Uh, so, yeah, take it for what it's worth. Terrible, terrible six match. Not terrible six match. Just, just there. You know, they're just there to fill fucking time. It felt like, uh, and people have better use of their time. That's really what it was. 
I mean, this whole tour, this whole Dontaku tour has been one great show spread out over a number of shows. Yeah. And that's personally not the way I like to consume it. Per- personally, I would rather they just stack up one really big show that everyone can get excited about and can generate a lot of buzz because uh, there, there has been very little buzz. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to see if they're happy with the, the attendances and if it is worthwhile for them spreading it so thinly. But yeah, the... The, uh, the result of this means I've got to go all the way to, what is this, the one, two, three, four, six, five, seventh. six, seventh, eighth match Whew. listed here before there's anything to talk about. But let, let's get into it anyway. So this was the NJPW World Television title match with Jeff Cobb, defeating Zack Sabre Jr. in 30 minutes, 28 seconds in what, or oh, maybe this might have been the match of the weekend. It's, it's right up there with... Gabe versus Shinga. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I'm watching the Champions League semi final between Real Madrid and Bayern Munich, and it's very, very exciting. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, I digress. Yeah, I thought this match was excellent. I, they've they've got great chemistry at the best of times. The other two matches they've had for this TV title have been great, so my expectations were high, and they somehow managed to I- exceed those. And look, this is going to sound uh, shocking, but I thought in this match. Chris Charlton and ELP did a really, really good job in getting over the story of the match and and getting over Zack Sabre Jr.'s rib injury and how that played into it and how Jeff Cobb was taking advantage of that. So I thought they actually did really, really well for the commentary for this match. It just all fell apart on night two for me. But um, yeah, they've got tremendous chemistry, like just the, the stylistic difference between the two of them. And the pace that they worked out, some of the, the counters and the transitions were stunning. And, and I, I said a while ago that with all the these big names leaving New Japan, I want to see more from the likes of Jeff Cobb and Zach and Taichi and Shingo. Like To me, those are the guys that you can rely on right now to deliver the highest quality matches. And I feel that's been vindicated with, with the weekend's events. Like, you know, I'm not saying they should be in the the heavyweight title picture and they should be front and center on every show, but you've got to lean on these guys to actually make sure you do have some quote unquote bangers on these cards. And this is exactly what these guys delivered. And it was just like a great long-term story with uh, what was it? Was it the first match was a draw and then Zach won the second match. So this was Jeff winning the rubber match. I think it's a great fit for him being TV world champion, uh, having these, you know, sprint matches where he could just rag doll people for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I think he deserves it to get a singles championship. He, uh, I've been saying this for a long time. And yeah, just great stuff all around. Yeah. I mean, listen, we're, we're talking about bright spots with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think it starts with those two guys. Uh, you know, under, like, I hate saying the word underrated because I don't, I think people appreciate what they bring to the table at this point. Um, but even still, like you, you can always count on Zach. You can almost always count on, on Jeff Cobb. And I think they both, yes, they both have great chemistry together. Um, and once again, I think, the one thing about the TV title, again, we love to fucking shit on all the, the many titles that this company has. And you know, the more they bring on, the the less valuable the other titles are in my eyes. But the one redeeming value of that TV championship is that matches are sprints and they're just, just jam-packed with goodness. And there's really very little room for opportunities to for for fuck ups and for just killing a crowd or you know just non like it's 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 all fucking steak and no sizzle you know it's it's there that's one good thing um i tell you what i don't know about you but i was rooting really fucking hard for jeff a i like the fact that he's getting a, a title b i like the fact that zach is losing that title um, I want, I want to be stereotyped. I want to be classified. Anybody gets that reference? I'll pay you five dollars. Um, the they are two of you could probably go on two hands, right? Like guys in this promotion right now that you could really fucking lean on to have a great match. Um. 
and I, and I hope one again Jeff Cobb in with this belt in, in with these stipulations I think it is tailor made. You're right. Have him just fucking be a monster and toss people around the fucking ring like it's you know yesterday's laundry. And I, Zach, I want to see him put against a load of very small wrestlers. Like yes. just give him ten defenses against yes. tiny guys who will just fly around for him. Yes. Oh, you 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 nailed it. Like that's what I want. I want uh <laughs> I want Vader esque is what I want. That's that would be beautiful. Uh yeah. And again, Zach, we say it a lot, hopefully losing up. Um it's obviously that quick win or quick loss and then quick win back uh, was meant to get the belt back <laughs> safely. And uh, yeah, it was just a temporary thing. And maybe they couldn't think of anybody else to fill that role. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I, I think, dare I say, dare I say, Summer of Zach. This is Summer of Z S J. I'm into it. I want it. I need it in my veins. <gasps> oh, I've got hiccups. Oh I'm no. So sorry. <laughs> uh, next match is uh, David Finley defeating Yota Suji in 22 minutes. Oh, oh Christ, this is going to be great. Seconds. This is going to be great. Go ahead. Yeah, we had high expectations for Yota Suji versus David Finley because these are the guys that we need to step up and you know, pick, pick up a ball and run with it. And we want them to have great matches and, you know, match of the year level matches. And this absolutely wasn't one. It wasn't a bad match. I thought it was a very good match. But uh, I think Suji was still feeling the after effects of whatever the illness was that kept him off the recent shows because he didn't look at his best. Uh, so this is just one of these situations where the Suji deniers are going to use this as yep. ammunition to, to bury him. And the same for the Finley deniers, actually. But the people who are more positive on those two are going to maybe do that, you know, squint to see it. They were actually, you know, the control periods were really interesting. And, oh, I thought Suji, Suji showed more of a, a well-rounded game here. And, and the truth is pr probably somewhere in the middle here. So, uh, yeah, how did you feel about the match? No, you're right. Um, in a sense that, well, again, we talked about it in the preview show. I was I was really begging for both of them to have a match that would wake people up and get them talking about them because they desperately needed it. And, you know, we were talking about how we felt David Finley was having a, a low key solid year. Um, high hopes for Yoda Suji. I don't know. I, 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 I hate to say it. I mean, again, I, 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 I'm more than happy to sit here and, and tell you, yep. Illness. Yep other circumstances, whatever it was, the fucking planets weren't aligned, whatever the case may be, maybe they aren't good uh, together, uh, whatever it was, it just didn't work for me. Um, and again, not to say that this was a terrible match, not to say that this was a bad match, but it certainly didn't deliver in a way that I had hoped. Um, and maybe they were unrealistic expectations uh, and not even expectations, I guess, wants and desires right, for both guys. Um, and I hate to say it, Joel, it left me with more questions than answers. It left me with more questions than answers in the sense of, okay, it feels like they, at one point they really wanted him to be the guy and you could put that label on both of them. And I don't know. I don't know if, if this match did them any favors like it didn't hurt them, mind you. Like I don't think people were going. These two are fucking awful, and why would they? Eat? I don't. Not, I'm not getting at that. But I don't think it did anything to win over anyone new, and I don't think it did anything to help even further the case for people who are really trying to rally behind both these guys specifically. Um. So in that case, you know, I don't think it necessarily accomplished what it needed to accomplish. Um, so, you know, is that, a, does that mean the match is a failure? Does that mean that we abandon ship? No, but it, once again, you're right. It does give people who already might not be on board 
plenty of ammunition to say, well, deliver then, you know, and shrug a shoulder because they're right. You know what I mean? They're right. They haven't and they didn't. Um, and I don't know if in this spot good is good enough. That, that's really how I felt when, when that's, this match ended. I think it was Mike Spears who coined the phrase uh, "gentlemen's three. And a lot of these big, these these high-end New Japan matches in recent months, they're not a gentleman's three. They're a gentleman's three and three quarter, right? Where you think, oh, yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. But it's not touching your, your you know, your match of the year. No, because, yeah, I want to have high expectations. I don't want to start grading stuff on a curve. But like you said, this, this was not top, top tier stuff. And... You know, we we want these guys to be top level guys. You know, they're they're responsible for carrying the company into the future, and um, they're just they're they're not there yet. Right. That's I, I you know, like hearing those words. That that's a that's a depressing thought, right? Because there is so much riding on a lot of these guys being the the future, and once again, it's we're early in a career. Trust me, I rec- I absolutely recognize that. After that match, did you have really any hope that Yoda Suji is going to be a guy? Like the promotion is going to make him a guy, but is he a guy? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay. every confidence that he's a guy. That's not okay. It's not affected my thoughts on that. Though. I don't know. I got a little shook by it. Like again, it didn't stink, and it wasn't sloppy, and nobody got hurt, and you know. The things that you really look at a pro wrestling match and be like, "Whoa, what the fuck's happening?" I don't know. Like I, I like I said, I had more you're questions. Play, you're playing Suji on fraud watch. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not going that far. But what I am putting him on is make me really fucking want to watch your matches. Like r- really, make me want to watch your matches because right now I'm more in a mode of, come on, buddy. I- I'm in Maple Leaf mode with the dude. I'm like, come on, do it. Do it. Okay, not this time. Okay, he's, he's got knowledge. Okay, that was good. But uh, like, 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 it's just it's just not there. Um, once again, this is a guy who is, is very young in his career, mind you. And I recognize that. And But come on. <laughs> you know, like, come on. We, we, I, I, I know there's more in the tank there. And I just don't know. Finley, look, I, I think Finley's had a solid year. I think this was a good match. Um, he's not. He, look, I think we're putting, if we're being honest and being fair, I think we're putting too high expectations on David Finley. I I, I do. Like, I, I don't, I think, I think if we put those same expectations on him every fucking match, I think we're just going to wind up being disappointed. And I think we got to lower the bar. The problem is, is that, the bar is 19, or excuse me, 2019, 2000, you know, 20, 2018, you know, like the bar's high. And I'm sorry that we're judging by that, but that's the fucking bar. That's the bar. And we're not, we're not close to that bar. Main event, IWGP Global Heavyweight title match, Nick Nemeth defeats Hiroshi Tanahashi, 17 minutes, 22. Uh, not the potential car crash that I was fearing given the state of Tanahashi. I thought they worked a pretty sensible and and relatively compelling match given the physical state of Tanahashi. Um, But I didn't see enough here and I suppose thinking ahead for um, the following night with Nick Nemeth versus David Finlay for me to think yeah, this guy's a great fit in New Japan. We absolutely want to be keeping him around. And, you know, backstage, he was making all those noises, saying, you know, oh, he doesn't just want to parachute in for the odd match. He wants to do it long-term, full-time, blah, blah, blah. I'll take that with a, a very hefty pinch of salt. But, um, uh, yeah, yeah, again, this this was okay. It was fine. It was a gentleman's three and three-quarter match. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I give I give Hiroshi Tanahashi a lot of credit for even fucking stepping foot in the ring and going that long. 
Um, he, it's you know he's not doing death defying maneuvers, um, but you know he's still physically you know, uh, having physical contact with another human being, which even that, even to that degree, is a little bit worrisome. Um, I don't know what the benefit of having Nick Nemeth in New Japan Pro Wrestling, like. If if the idea of him being a ticket seller in the states, I I think that is certainly not proven at all, right? Um, I don't think people are clamoring down the door uh, and 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 hitting refresh on their browser to buy tickets with Nick on on top of the card. You know, show me the proof if that's the case. Um, oh, yeah, he, again, yeah, he, and again here he's headlining the show in Japan. Yeah, and there's half as many people as there were last year. So, yeah, I mean, look, like I mean, I don't, I, you know what? And it is what it is, right? It that those are the numbers, and you, you know, it, it's that's that's what it is. But to me, he's the. I would think he's a guy that they were like, okay, well, you know, we'll have him on shows if they come. If we come to Philly, if we come to Chicago, if we, you know, the fucking Long Island show, whatever. Um, but once again, I, I just don't like, are there people lining up around the corner because he's on the bill? I don't see it. Uh, add to that, that he's a complete non-factor uh, on Japanese shows. Um, he's not necessarily like he's a fine pro wrestler, but like. Is he a, is is does he necessarily bring value to what New Japan hopefully is trying to accomplish, or what they've accomplished in the past, or even who they want to be? Like, you know, like where's the value? Um, I can't imagine, and I haven't heard anything about it, and I don't, I don't know if you have either. I've, I've been a little away from my phone, but. Um, He's not sticking around G one, right? I've not heard anything. Yeah. I, I I doubt it though. Me too. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I mean, he again, a good wrestler. Yes. Am I? Am I? Like, are my pants down thinking of him against fucking you know, Shingo, uh, Gabe Kid, uh, you know. Go down the list, Zach. You know, like I like. Does would anybody really give a fuck? Um, so I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of over it. That little experiment that we had with uh, you know guys getting really and listen, they get, they had a new batch of of, of uh, releases WWE. So I'm sure Rocky's on the phone seeing you know what fucking straggler he can fucking <laughs> bring on. Bring on to a new Japan show. Anybody, any, any uh, pro wrestlers in that, uh, in that batch, uh, any, any of them uh, problematic as they say, any of them have any court dates pending or, uh, cause I'm guaranteed <laughs> it'll be on a fucking new Japan show. That's for sure. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of over the experiment. I'm all running new Japan affiliated Ponzi schemes in, uh, Oceania. <laughs> it was perfect. Yes. I mean, that it's, I mean, it sounds like they're already kind of on their way to that, but anywho, um, yeah. It was, uh, again, I don't want to sit here and just praise Hiroshi Tanahashi for a match that he physically was, sh- it was shocking that he was even able to do that, what, what he did, uh, and not give praise to Nick. Good match. Gentlemen's three and a half, right? But, like, it's not something that is on our radar for anything end of the year. And, like, in these spots, in these st- in these positions on shows and show major shows, let's let's not kid ourselves. Dantaku is a major show for New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's not Wrestle Kingdom, but it's you know on the calendar. It's it's a it's a show. It's a big show. Like it's not it, that's not working. And I and and I will again once again also say that you know Dantaku. Like what was the, it? It feels like you could count on one hand the great matches that have come out of. Dantaku. And I'm not talking about the 90s. Don't give me the fucking Fukuoka Dome. Like, like that's a different time. I'm, I'm talking like modern-ish. Um, 
it's really not a lot when it comes to Fukuoka. <laughs> you know, I, I'm really trying to think of like what was what's been the greatest match that's come out of those Dontaku shows in recent memory. Not many, right? Um, but even so, just I expected more. I expected more for the position, but the match itself, I don't think anybody was really like, yep, this is going to be fucking one for the ages. Nobody thought that. All right, moving on to night two then, and I'm going to skip straight ahead to... Where? Christ, we've got to go deep on this one. IWGP Tag Team title match. Uh, oh Bullet Club, Chase Owens and Kenta defeat. What the fuck are we doing there, Joel? Honestly, what the fuck? Why? What is the point? Is it just to make people, like, just question it? Like, seriously. Like, give me the benefit of, of this happening again. Give me one benefit. One. Look, my working theory for them being belted up the first time is that's, like, a little reward. A little pat on the head for saying thanks for being loyal soldiers for New Japan. Like, one IWGP heavyweight tag title reign for a couple of months... I, I can accept that, you know. I hold my nose and swallow that. Right. Two, that is that's flushing the whole division down the shitter. And I know historically this has not been one that has been front and center and, and got all the, you know, shiny bright lights and, and big stars. But we have done so much better than this recently. Yeah, and there were really promising signs coming out of it. I can't think of what they are at the moment because the trauma of seeing Chase Owens. <laughs> Uh, and ELP and Hikolo front and center have just wiped away all the good stuff that I'm sure was there at some point within the last couple of years. But now I just, I don't have, like, if they don't care, I don't care. That's the, that's the problem. That is the problem. You, you nailed it. Like, you know, all they had to do, Joel, was nothing. <laughs> have a match, pin, chase, and we go on. We move on. And I think the vast majority of people who watch this product would have been, okay, cool, what's next? But now it was like, I don't know. It's kind of like the teacher that rewards bad behavior, right? Like it's it's the, you know, you're not going to like, okay, you did it once, but you did it again? Okay, you obviously didn't learn any lessons from the first time. When, when we gave you a second chance and we trusted you to say, okay, you're not going to fuck us over again, are you? Well, you fucked us over again. Okay, that's, that's cool. But now that's that's exactly what you get. You get, okay, fast forward. That's what you get. You get fast forward. Uh, and I don't understand, like, once again, like, what is the benefit? Like, who's winning in this? Like, who's... Like, what's the goal here? What's the plan here? Like, it feels to me that it's just a, a, a rudderless ship. Like, there's no plan. There isn't, there isn't a plan. And it's like, show up at the building and be like, ah, why not? Let's just fucking do this because why not? I, or I, I don't know. Like, can I just, I don't know. Somebody give me, somebody help me. Somebody help me. Help me understand why the fuck this is. Not even a good idea. You don't even need to give me a good idea. Give me how does this benefit anyone besides Kenta's mother? Who no, yeah, at- exactly. <laughs> That's what exactly what I was thinking. How does this benefit anyone apart from Chase Owens? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like it's just but once again Even it- Kenta looks a bit embarrassed. Like he's a bit <laughs> sheepish thinking, oh, I probably shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> right. Right. They know. Oh, I-, I don't know. Look. There are times in this promotion where the tag titles have been one of those things where it's been like, oh, I mean, if they could just give it like a quarter of the attention that they give the big boy belt or even the IC title or, you know, at, at sometimes the never title. Like, and you're right, like with Goto and Yoshihashi, it, there were times where it's like, okay, here we go. There were times when it was Goto and fucking Shibata for a second or two. And you're like, oh, here we go. There were times when, but then you get, Dangerous techers. Okay, yes. But then you get like Kingdom. (laughs) You get Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. You get Chase Owens and Kenta. You get G.O.D. seven times. 
you know, there were times when it was like, okay, great. We got Juice and David Finley. Oh, we have, you know, G.O.D. again. Um, I don't know. I like, like they, there's no excuse why it can't be. I'll say it right now. You have really one job and, and it's, and it's, and if you want to have 17 titles, knock yourself out. But if you can't book 17 titles, don't have 17 titles. Right. And it feels like they can only at any one given time, concentrate on two titles and everything else goes to piss. Right. Everything else is just like just floating in the abyss. And then they remember they have these titles and then they swap out one of them and they focus on that. And then they, they can only handle two. Then why are we having, why do we have so many? If you can only book that you only have one job is to book creative storylines. How fucking difficult is it? Joe, how difficult is it? Joe, I swear to God, I could sit down with an empty notebook and book out a year's worth of shit. And again, that is, that's the easy part, getting it to, to, to work and getting, getting away from, scot-free from injuries and, and all the things that pro wrestling throws curveballs and life and all that. I could sit down and book out in, in two hours, less than that, an hour. I can book out a fucking year's worth for every one of those titles. We landed on Kenta and Chase Owens again. Okay. All right. That tells me, honestly, that tells me that you're just fucking lazy. It really does. It tells me that you just, you, you, your, your mind is somewhere else. Your focus is somewhere else. Um, and back in the day, like, you know, Liger used to book the fucking juniors because Ricky chose you had too much on his fucking plate. Okay, great. Fine. Have that. Can we do that? You got a lot of old guys in that locker room. You got plenty of fucking guys who've been around the block that know a little thing or two about pro wrestling. You mean to tell me they can't fucking be, okay, Tenzon, tag title belts are yours. Book them out. Yuji Nagata, how about you? You want to contribute? Great. Hey, fucking whomever. Rudderless ship. Rudderless ship. Chase Owens, Kenta. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I'm sure you spent more time talking about it there than whoever yeah, it spent thinking about it. So uh, it doesn't does deserve our time or attention, uh, and it doesn't deserve yours either, listener. So let's move on to some actual good wrestling. Never open weight title match. Shingo Takagi defeats Gabe Kid. 21 minutes, 23 seconds. Talk about restoring the feeling, Damon. We we needed this as a yeah. palate cleanser after that tag title match. Look. His mileage varies with people. I get it. And sometimes it's like he's going to beat you over the head with his fucking hooliganism and his fucking, you know, him being him. We get it. You're a wild guy. But. You put that fucking element in a ring with another guy who is equally as, as maybe a little bit more low key, but in the ring, eh, pretty fucking dangerous. Love it. Excellent. Fantastic. And talk about making the most of a moment, right? Like, name me another guy in New Japan in 2024 that has made the most of his opportunity. And sometimes we might look back and be like, wow, that was really fucking risky. Wow, that fucking spot was fucking dangerous. Wow, he might even get a little bit of fucking, a, a little talking to in the locker room, possibly. Uh, he might miss a date or two. <laughs> you know, who knows? You know, planes are weird. Uh, I don't know, man. There's something there. Like, that I can, that I'm really digging in the sense that there is, there is a, 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 a loose cannon. There is a fucking, I don't know. There is, there's something. <sighs> All right. I, I was going to give you an analogy, but like, I'm, I'm afraid to now because I don't want to talk about porn and it's not porn. Okay. But you know how like there's. There, there, I think we there, should be allowed to talk about a little bit of porn. A little bit of porn? All right. No, it's not porn related. Um, 
but you know how like and i think it, it, there's there's a a female to male equal equivalent um and 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 anything whatever it, it, that's not the point the point is this is that isn't there something a little bit sexy about a dangerous person um a a a a, a young lady who might have a you know a couple tattoos, sleeve, or I don't know, maybe a little dangerous. I don't know. That get gives off a little bit of a dangerous vibe. And even guys, like the, the you know the whole bad boy thing, and that was always that's always been a thing. Um, I don't know. Like I do appreciate the idea of him being. You don't know what the fuck you're gonna get. Uh, and name me another guy in 2024 who's, who's taken advantage of the opportunities like him. Um, say what you will about safety and all that stuff like gabe kid has fucking found a nice little fucking spot do we all kind of wish okay let's 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 develop the, uh, a little bit something more a little bit something a little bit more nuanced with i'm, I'm kind of in the boat of i don't give a fuck i want i want crazy ass i don't give a fuck gabe kid because to me does it have a possibility of wearing thin it does no doubt but right now, I'm fucking it. I'm I'm on the deep end of the pool with Gabe Kid. Love it. Love the dangerousness of him. Love the fucking unpredictability of him. Uh, and what what a great weekend the dude had. You know what I mean? Like what a, what what? Not only a great weekend, but like you know, great week. Uh, and a great 2024. Like he's made the most of his opportunities. That's for fucking sure. And Shingo, look. Maybe one of the most valuable pickups New Japan has has ever really done. Like he's just so versatile. I mean, again, Okada obviously is in that list, and uh, but like he like name me another guy, Abushi. You could probably put in that list. All right, so I'm naming a lot of guys, but you get my point. <laughs> he's a very valuable p- fucking commodity, um, and I think. Like he he's even exceeded my pretty high expectations of when he was brought in uh, to LIJ. Like to me, he's exceeded those. Um, and look, he's not twenty. You know, appreciate what you got because I'm not saying it's ending soon. But uh, can we can we safely say he's on the downward trend of a of a long career? Like he's been around the block. He's been around the block. So, yeah, great match. We definitely needed it. Um, and we talked about matches of the weekend. Like, to me, this is, like, if not it, then it's, like, 1A. Because, yeah, yeah. Um, was this, like like, a classic? I mean... Look, you could put it in a in a nice best of. I wouldn't have any problem with that sitting in a compilation of the best of twenty four. I think I think it's I'd say, I'd say a classic for the never title. Yeah. yeah, I think. I mean, seriously, I think it's one of the best matches of twenty four. Don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, restored some of the prestige and, and the aura to that title, which meant something you know started off as a silly thing with the uh, whatever the gimmick was supposed to be for young wrestlers and then gradually morphed into being the hard-hitting title where people would beat the crap out of each other and then just sort of lost its way a bit in recent years but this this is exactly what we want from it isn't it this is this is why yeah. we tune into new japan pro wrestling we need this we need these type of matches on these shows and this is just really i feel like the gay kid Deniers are, are running out of ammo here because every time he goes out there, he is delivering. And that's no question for me because his talent is never in question. For me, it was about can the company rely on this guy? Can right. they trust him? But with him being put in a big match like this and possibly or a strong probability of him winning the strong openweight title from Eddie Kingston at the weekend and with this big spot he's been given challenging for the the title in Noah, that to me is really exciting because to me that's showing that the company trusts this guy now, that his push has caught up with his talent level. 
mm. with all these opportunities he's been given. And and I can see that he's just tweaked his style. I, I said a while ago, didn't I, that I think he might have to dial things back a bit. And I think he's done that, and it, it, not in a way that has compromised the drama of his matches or his appeal to me as a wrestler. He's just tweaked it, just dialed things back enough for me to see that, yes, there is that sustainability there that I worried about before. And just yeah. the, he's, there, there's more to his game as well. I thought his selling in this match was really outstanding, just like that sort of defiance where you know he's got nothing left at the end of the match and he's done. But just the way he sold that was really excellent. And, and I've not seen that many people talking about it. So I know I'm like the number one game kid cheerleader and I have been for, it feels like years now, but we're, we're here. We've reached a problem. Well, have we reached the promised land? No, because I think a ceiling is, is higher than this, but we're absolutely on the right trajectory. Very exciting stuff. And man, I don't know. I'm just pivoting here to talk about a different wrestler and I don't know what his future is because there've been a lot of hints on uh, Twitter about, possibly factoring into the WWE Bloodline story. But how exciting would it be to drop a fully fit Henare back into this never overweight title mix? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we talked about this, whether it would be last week or the week before, it's 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 pre-built. It's, it's, it's pre-built. Yeah. Imagine him just fucking showing up and knowing, knowing the next time they're in the ring, it would be, an absolute fucking war. Uh yeah. Um give me give me not to pivot too hard, but give me your thoughts on the chances of him not returning to New Japan. Cause I'm I've heard a bunch of different things, like like maybe two or three different possibilities. Um give me scale of one to ten. Does he does he not return to New Japan pro wrestling? Look, when I saw Tagaloa getting signed by WWE, okay, right, right. all bets are off. Like yeah. we know, we know for a fact that WWE are aggressively recruiting Polynesian wrestlers. Like we know that they're interested in guys like Hannah Ray. So there is absolutely interest there, and I'm I would put my I would bet my bottom dollar that they have made plays for him. It's just a question of does he accept? Does he see more value in? That feeling, you know, the line mark, the, the stuff like this, these kind of Shingo and Gabe Kim matches in his future or taking the check from WWE. And I don't know, like there's no right or wrong answer there. Obviously, I would love for him to stick around. But for me, like, honestly, it's it's 50-50 at this moment. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. The, the, the idea of him having these great matches is a little bit masturbatory in the sense of, like he wants to have these matches. Like in talking with him, and and in every conversation I've ever had with the dude, like he takes a lot of pride in that. Like he wants to be a guy that people say, "What a fucking great match!" Like like that that he wears that with pride, and rightfully so. Um, that being said, I mean we just talked about fucking Tongaloa, you know, hiding underneath a fucking ring, <laughs> getting that that check clears, boom. You know, worth every worth every fucking moment. So, you know, let's let's again not to shit on New Japan Pro Wrestling, but the infrastructure, the uh, the idea that you're working for. Quite honestly, you know the 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 largest pro wrestling company in the world. Uh, and again, once again, the infrastructure, the setup, the management, the professionalism uh, you know whether that's real or 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 you know just something to fucking hide behind um it, it you know you see that at a surface level and you know i'm sure it's impressive to a guy who you know traveling on a fucking motor coach you know across japan i don't know your your results may vary so yeah i i definitely sit here and i hope i would love to see these matches love it but I think, you know, I think one, honestly, two points that, that really I want to push. One, we know WWE 
is interested. That 100%. Two, New Japan has to do a better job locking people down and committing. And and they and they haven't. Um, and there's no indicator that that's the case in the future. And not to pivot once again, but to, you know, I got a lot of texts from people about Kevin Kelly going off kind of, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, hey, he doesn't, he doesn't drink. Maybe he started again. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but, uh, look, they got to, they got to, they got to do a better job. If they want to compete, they got to be, they got to do a better job. And, and if they're going to let the, like a guy like Hanari walk after so much time and so much effort and so much, uh, that, you know, has been invested. It's like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? So fingers crossed. I, I, I hope for our entertainment sake and, and, and his, and he gets what he wants and he gets what he needs that we do have a future with Gabe and, and Hanari in the same ring. Then we had the uh, impromptu IWGP Global Heavyweight title match that was added the night before. Yeah. Why is it as soon as I mute myself, there's Why did she do that? Well, she's... Uh, you right? Yeah. David Finlay <laughs> defeated Nick Nemeth in 50 minutes, 34 seconds to win back his IWGP Global Heavyweight title, uh, which I called last week. I, I thought the direction was either going to be Suji challenging... Tanahashi for it, or Finley challenging them. I didn't realize they were going to do it with a 24 hour turnaround. I thought they might wait for resurgence, but they didn't. I don't know why they hot shotted it like this. I don't know if it was just because they wanted to just wrap things up with Nick Nemeth while he was in Japan and get it all done and dusted. And they obviously didn't have any plans to have him booked for the, the resurgence show. And I'm not really sure that this past the parcel has benefited David Finley in any way. I didn't come out of this match having changed my opinion about either guy, to be honest. The match was pretty good. Again, a, a gentleman's three and three quarter star match. Um, but I just, I, I do feel moving forward that uh, David Finley versus Yota Suji is going to be the extended feud for this white title because it was notable in the match the day before that Suji was somewhat protected in defeat by having the shillelagh uh, shot lead into to his defeat. So I do think they're going to meet each other again for this belt. But um, yeah, your thoughts, please, on Finley versus Nick Nimbus. I was actually hoping that, and it's not like David Finley's this, you know, former WWE guy who's, you know, he knows where the hard camera is. Uh, that's not him. But in the same breath, I was kind of like, well, I don't know, maybe stylistically they, they match up a little bit better. Maybe they kind of are, are a little bit more on the same, same wavelength. Um, and and they were to a large degree, but maybe that's the, the underlying problem is that they were, they were on the same wavelength of okay, of decent, of, you know, and I'm, and not that I know anything in in this regard, but it does feel like that they were like, well, look, he's here. We might as well take the belt off of him now, just in case, <laughs> just, just, just to cover ourselves here. And good for New Japan for at least having the fucking brains to be like, okay, you know what? We'll switch things up and we'll, let's get our belt back. Let's 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 keep this here. Um, I've heard, I mean, I think we both have heard this, this might be the end of, of Nick, right? The Nick experiment, correct? I don't, I don't expect him to be back. Yeah. I, again, I've not heard anything, but it does feel like we have, we're just satisfying the contracted dates and now we're ready to move on. The funniest Uh, thing is that. The rumor of him saying, "Well, I I got to fight Tanahashi." <laughs> like imagine, <Yeah. laughs> imagine, imagine that conversation. It's funny here. Uh, Suit Williams says, "With the mid card titles, we're all in agreement that new beginning just didn't happen this year." It's it's amazing <laughs> how quickly all the big shopping shocking changes from that have just been 
erased. <laughs> I, what is it with the beginning of a year and then them just kind of cooling off everything? Like, because it, it, fe- it feels very similar to, to like last year, where maybe last year was even more chaotic in the sense of what the fuck is happening? Uh, all the things are happening, as the great Bob Cole would say. Uh, God rest his soul. The, uh, yeah. And once again, here we are. Like this was a little bit more of a calm down version of that, but yeah, it does. It does seem that way. Um, I don't know. I, I again, I don't. I look. It's once again. I'll say it once again. It's very easy to book out and and to map things out in, in a little notebook and be Mister Creative Booking Guy. Uh, it's harder to actually see it come to pass. Uh, it just it just feels aimless. Like it just feels aimless. I don't know. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I one we got to get rid of the the two nights. I think the two nights aren't helping anyone or anything. Two, the like we just need a, a better focus and a better idea for a lot of these guys. And and you know what I'm really, but I, I will say I'm really proud of the people that have still been able to rise above this mediocrity in the company. Like at every turn, if it, it feels like in in recent months, we hear stories of just how fucking mid New Japan is across the board. Like just so many fucking stories where you're like, oh my god, I can't believe something like that would happen in this day and age in a, in a pro wrestling company that's trying its best to be uh, a viable option. Yet there are wrestlers, Joel, that have done sw- the swam upstream. They're little, they're, they're salmon. They're salmon spawning up a river. Um, Nick's not one of them. <laughs> Nick's not one of them. So I don't know. I, I mean, I your feel. What were your feelings when when two nights turned it off? All that happened. Give me give me your overall temperature of what you're feeling with this company as of right now. Ah, uh, well, yep, yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some some stuff I'm excited about. I'm excited yeah. about. I you know obviously we've not talked about Mox versus Ren yet, but. I'm looking forward to Mox versus Shota. I'm, I'm interested to see where the Mox title reign ends and who's going to benefit from that. I'm very happy with the direction of the Never title. The Global Heavyweight title, yeah, I think that is a good belt for David Finlay to have, but am I you know, on the edge of my seat looking excited about who he's going to be defending against next? Not really. Tag titles, no. Junior tag titles, yes, that's good. Junior, uh, IWGP Junior title on show, no thanks. Uh, so it's just like a, a TV title, Jeff Cobb, very good. There's just like a mix of stuff that is good and exciting and a mix of stuff where I'm just like, what are you doing, guys? Uh, uh, Mac19 says, what the fuck is NJPW doing? There it is. That's the question. I think this rebuild is going to take a very long time. It just feels very sort of Jekyll and Hyde, doesn't it? Some stuff that you think, great, more of this, and some stuff where you're just like, this is madness. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It it is, yeah, and it doesn't have to be. That that's the thing. It, it doesn't have to be. Um, financials aside, you're going to lose talent. Okay, let let's just let's just say that that's going to happen. You still there's still enough talent in that company where it's like okay, what you know, what are we doing? You know, why are we why are we why in one hand are we we do we look, present ourselves a certain way, and then in another hand we're presented in a completely different light it's crazy to me anyway uh yeah main event time uh mox ren narita um boy did i fucking hate this match (laughs) fucking hated it i hated everything about it um i hated the beginning interference i hated the mid interference i hated i hated show to get involved i hated uh I don't think Mox was that great, to be honest with you. Uh, didn't even bleed. 
Nebraska man says, is, it mo- is a mox match a mox match if there is no blood? Which Good is point. a fair point. And David Bentley Fart says, is it just me or was the most interesting thing in the Red Moxie match the show to run in? Ren's lack of personality and charisma was on full display, but you you didn't like the show to run either. I mean, if I had to rank things that were, you know, top of the list that I enjoyed, okay, maybe that's in the in the in the upper half of it, but like I don't know, man. I was I I I knew I felt like I knew what I was getting myself into, but boy, it just yeah, felt like that's what I was gonna ask. Like, did it did it match your expectations or did it disappoint no, no. you even for the low bar that you set for it? You know, I mean I had I had a very mid bar. I was hoping it would go one way. It went the it went the other way, but I'm not shocked by that. It just felt like it just came in waves and waves and waves and waves. Once again, at the top of the fucking show, like at the at the tippy top of the show. Once again, Mox, are you going to get a walk and brawl nine times out of ten? Yep. Um, that and that's not to say that that's terrible because. Look, if anybody's going to do a walk and brawl, it's it's going to be him, and and there is that little bit like how do I phrase this right? Mox feels like a cartoony version of Gabe Kid. Like Mox is going to give you the professional version of oh, what a chaotic guy he is. Oh, he does. He marches to his own beat. Like he's going to give you the polished version of that where Gabe feels like the punk band coming on stage, ripping up fucking four songs, each at about two and a half minutes uh, length each and just fucking tearing it up and blowing the joint up and leaving and saying, fuck you. Bye. Like uh, that's what I felt. Uh, That's what I felt. Um, and once again, just like I don't know, man. I know, I know that there are people that, and and sometimes I don't know if it's like they're just trying to be like ironic or you know whatever. But seriously, are, are like have we had enough of the fucking house of torture stuff? Like it's just there's a time and a place for everything, and I, like I'm just like wow beating me over the fucking head with it is like i don't know <laughs> i mean to me it, it just showed that there was a lack of confidence in ren to be able to do anything interesting by himself mm. that they put all this smoke and mirrors into it and i always viewed ren joining house of torture as a tool in his development as as a means rather than the end and of course we're gonna have to wait probably several years to see if that remains to be the case. Uh, but from what I saw here, did this do, you know, did Ren's affiliation with House of Torture and having this title match with Mox do for him what I hoped it would do? No, because they didn't let him do enough with Mox to to really gain from it. They, they was just too heavy-handed with the interference and, and Shota being, I like, I... I I don't think Shota should have been so prominent in this because I know he's got the match with Mox coming up, but fucking hell, man. Let let Ren have a chance. Let Ren have his match and, you know, worry about the Shota stuff later. <laughs> so I just yeah. felt that there was a complete <laughs> lack of faith in Ren and that they put all the bells and whistles of the smoke and mirrors and didn't really give him the opportunity to gain from the match in any meaningful way. That's a good point. That is, I mean, that is a good point. And and the only thing I'll say is this, is that the idea of him developing by doing this, like, what's the end game? So, okay, he becomes good at hiding stuff from referees and doing Healy stuff and blah, blah, blah. But but the end game is him eventually, you know, kind of waking up and turning his back on that or... Is that his career? Because if he turns, <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. Like, I think if we're waiting for this, the big baby face turn to come with these guys, uh, sometimes it just never comes, right? You know, we and wait that's... for the Jay White redemption angle, it never happens. Is it going to happen with show? Probably yeah. not. No, evil is it coming? I doubt it. I think you know. My fear is that okay, Ren is just going to be House of Torture forever now. It, and okay, so let's say a year from now he's 
he's got the shtick down. He's really good at being a, a, a real weaselly heel. Um, then what? Like, what does he learn from that? I guess is my question. Like, as a as a baby face f- fighting that off, is he going to be able to dictate a pace of a match? Is he going to be able to really work off of crowd reactions? Like, like I guess my question is this: Will this make him a more well rounded performer? Possibly, possibly. I think to me, doing this kind of shtick is of all the pro wrestling genres, aside from maybe like being the big fat guy, you know, the fucking, you know, Haystacks Calhoun or the fucking big daddy of the world. Like that's the easiest job in pro wrestling. Having people just bounce off of you and and falling on them and being fat. And that's your gimmick. Um, The second easiest is being a shitbag heel like that. Like that's to me, I don't, I don't really find like, I think comedy wrestlers have like, there's more, like nuance. Okay, so House of Torture is done. He leaves. So what does he take from that moving forward? Like like what skills does he take? What like how is that the thing that makes him a better wrestler? That's the one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is he's this for the rest of his career. This is what he is. He becomes fucking you know what the chic <laughs> you know what i mean like like he's gonna be 55 and fucking doing abdul the butcher type shit like what is like what are we doing like what what are we doing like is he is he the fucking new mr pogo like what are we doing um i think there's so much more that the dude could be and maybe down the road that happens but like a you're right let him fucking shine didn't happen b can we can we take him seriously? No, that really didn't happen. Uh, and he like I don't see him coming out of this match. You know he was going to lose. I mean I don't think there was any question of that. But do you lose strong? And I don't think he did. I think he just was fucking there. Like he was a fucking placeholder. It felt like. So I don't like. I know people want to tell me about heel stuff and people want to fucking try and, and, and sell me on, you know, when, once they get their come up and uh, yeah, it's the whole, that's pro wrestling one oh one. It's also new Japan pro wrestling who, as much as people want to say, Oh, the breadcrumbs and the, and the storytelling. Okay. Well, guess what? We just rattled off off the top of our fucking head. Things that literally went nowhere. <laughs> nowhere uh, and I think I, th- I think the idea of Ren Narita lo- life to- lifetime lifetime <laughs> what am I fucking Gary De- 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 uh a lifetime of lifetime member of House of Torture that's to me incredibly disappointing and not for nothing as I like to say I would put show in that category too. I know we, I know you like funny face show. Like is show is that show? Like is that do you really honestly want that to be show 3 years from now, 4 years from now? I don't. Yeah, is that a rhetorical question cuz no, I agree ah, with you. I, I think yeah. I I think with all of these guys, the heel turn is most interesting when that is a, a stop on the road of the you know the journey. You know, mm-hmm. like Naito. Naito went through his gobernable, gobernable, gobernable phase. <laughs> gobble, and gobble. Then that, that made him that made him uh, an even more compelling baby face. So. I guess if you do it with all the heels, then you're not going to be left with any heels. But uh, and you don't necessarily need to do it with all the heels. But I think feel with your sort of homegrown talent, that is something you want to do. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could bring the foreigners in, and they can be like the cartoonish heel for their entire run with New Japan. Fine, but I feel I don't know. I mean, I suppose we're getting into hypotheticals here. But if if this is it for Show and Ren, that will be. A wasted opportunity. I think so. 
I absolutely think so. And like, I wonder if like, I would love to be backstage as they go through the curtain. Like, are they high fiving like with management? You know, oh, great show, guys. That's that's how you do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like is anybody really proud? Like when the, when the cameras are turned off? Like, are we are we proud of what of the product that we're delivering with this up at the top? I don't know. Proofs in the pudding, right? Ticket sales, interest, uh, buzz. I think these are all prime indicators, guys. I really do. Sorry. I I just don't see the end game here with this, but I don't run a pro wrestling company and apparently neither do they. <laughs> but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Here's what it is. What we're going to do is preview New Japan Strong Resurgence, which Ooh. is coming up this weekend on the 11th of May. We're going to start off with the, the buy-in, the pre-show, where we've got the Strong Survivor match, Matt Vandegrift versus Adrian Quest. Uh, it seems that they see some value in Matt Vandegrift, so I assume he's going to pick up another win here. And then here's a funny one for our pre-show. Singles match, Mustafa Ali versus Leo Rush. Is this just New Japan flexing? Why is this on the pre-show? Yeah, pre-show of all things. I mean that that that's potentially a a a, a good match. Pre-show, huh? Hmm. Uh, I mean, one one could argue that the pre-show is there to have people, you know, sign up. But like, it's not a. Is it a paid? Of, yeah, it's probably. It's not. A, is it on World? I wouldn't know. I don't have my subscription. <laughs> I don't know. Is it a pay per view? No, pay per view, yeah. Mm. Fight TV, okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things where it's like you know we're trying to fucking get people to sign up. Maybe they have a a as the kids say a banger, and uh, it, it, that works. Does seem weird, doesn't it? They do that a lot, though. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't we have a Tom Lawler? Um, um God. Fred Ross, yeah. Fred Ross, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Went blank. Uh, yeah, recently. I don't know. Seems seems like too good of a match to have on a pre-show, but what do I know? Main card, then. We've got a six-man tag team match with Chaos, uh, Rocky Romero, and Tommy Hiro Ishii, plus the DKC versus House of Torture, Evil, Jack Perry, and Ren Narita. We've got the New Japan Strong Openweight Tag Team title match with TMDK, Mikey Nichols and Shane Haste against Gorillas of Destiny, ELP and Hikolo, which I mean, we forgot to mention that after the IWGP tag match that we had all four of these teams coming up and shouting and pointing at each other. Um, I don't I don't care. I'm just not really interested <laughs> in it. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think TMDK retain and hopefully they can try and think up something vaguely interesting for Hikolo to do on his way out of the company. I don't know if this is going to be like an angle at the end of this where he turns heel and attacks ELP and they pivot into a Hikolo ELP feud. I don't know if there'd be any value to that, but that's one possibility. Uh, we've got a tag team match with uh, Fred Rosser and Tom Lawler against the West Coast Wrecking Crew, Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs. I seem to be the only person who rates West Coast Wrecking Crew. And I like the story going into this with... Um, the, the dissolution of Team Filthy, which is no longer a thing, and all the hair eating and everything. I thought they, they did a really good job delivering that angle at the Windy City Riot show. So this, I don't know, probably sink or swim. I mean, if they can't deliver something compelling in this spot, then, yeah, maybe, <laughs> unlikely to be seeing them in such a spot again. I think they're quite, I don't know, lucky to be getting a, a spot like this on the main card. I mean, again, if you look at... Uh, Leo Rush and Mustafa Ali relegated to the pre-show, then yeah, you got you got to take this opportunity, boys. Uh, tag team match, we've got Bullet Club, David Finney and Kenta against LIJ team of Naito and Yota Suji. So uh, yeah, again, I, I just think this Finley Suji thing is one to keep an eye on going forward because they like to have their trilogies in a calendar yeah. year, don't they, New Japan? So I wouldn't be surprised if we get that again at some point. 
It is an interesting one. The New Japan Strong Women's title match. So Stephanie Vaquer versus Alex Windsor. So Will on our Discord has given some really interesting notes here on Alex Windsor. Uh, nothing on Blur or Oasis? <laughs> no, nothing on Blur Oasis. Uh, so she's from Norwich. She's originally trained by the Knights from the fighting with my family, that family. Uh, very good technically and good striker. Wrestled a lot across the UK in the 2010s until she had bad injuries, retired in 2018. Healed up, started wrestling again in 2022. While she was always pretty good since coming back, she's been really good in Will's opinion. Definitely one of the wrestlers on the UK scene post-pandemic who felt they could go on to bigger things. Uh, he adds... Uh, this is not Will Ospreay, by the way, who's running this. <laughs> I assume this is a different <laughs> be one. <laughs> uh, yeah, he says... He oh, says let, me, let me tell I, you about my girl, bra. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. He, he says, I think people know her as Osprey's missus quite a lot. And personally, like Damon, I've tried to avoid referring to her cause, uh, as yeah. that because I think that's reductive and she's got her own qualities. Uh, and Will adds, she's more than good enough for the opportunity she's been getting. Not great at character work, but very good in ring. She was a long-running RevPro Women's Champion over the last couple of years and has been great in pro wrestling Eve too. She's had a run of quite hard-hit matches, dog collar, no DQ, in the last month, which has shown her fire. So I think she'll have a really good match for Stephanie V at the weekend. So thank you, Will, for that. And that yeah. has made me... Uh, and I was looking forward to the match anyway, but now even more so having that very useful information about Alex Windsor going in. I don't think Alex Windsor is going to win, and I think Stephanie Vaquer is a, a really good choice to be holding the strong women's title at the moment, but uh, all the same, looking forward to a good match there. Uh, here's an interesting one. Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Zack Sabre Jr. They just they love doing this match. <laughs> they cannot help themselves booking Tanahashi versus Zack. And, they really can uh, I mean, we had a question. Bernie Hammer says, do you think ZSJ is the favourite for the G1? I mean, possibly. I, I do feel, and again, I'll keep saying this, like, losing up, but um, he did mention that he's interested in going after the IWGP World Heavyweight title. And so did Taichi, actually. Taichi said that. And I think he and Taichi said they wanted to be in the same block. Same block. So. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, yeah, Tanahashi versus Zach. This feels just like a, a heat-up match for Zach to win. And then maybe... He pops out, pops his head behind the curtain after the main event. So we'll just stick a pin in that. But I, I, th there's a chance that this may not be the last we see of ZSJ on this show. Uh, then we've got the NJPW World Television title match with Jeff Cobb getting in his first defense against, oh boy, Lance Archer. So we get getting wow. our beefy big boys meat slapping meat so yeah not the <laughs> my original uh, idea of having tiny wrestlers who can fly around the ring for him but jeff cobb versus lance archer i'm into that sign me up for that that would be really good yeah uh never overweight title match shingo takagi defending against yuya uemura now that's a bit of a curious one i didn't see that one coming because obviously yuya is our kopw champion so yeah, that's just a bit of a, a, a funny choice, isn't it, to have that show that that match in the USA? Why do you think they've yeah, done I that? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, here's the thing: a great you, spot for you, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like, so do you want you to 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 be losing this match? I, I mean, I don't think. That's oh, he's not winning. Like, that's I don't well, think right. he's winning. I think. The bet, yeah. Again, what's the intention? Here? Is that they have a hard hitting match and Yuya gets beaten up but looks good in defeat, and then we're trying to get a bit of a, a buy in with the American, the, the Yankoi imbecile fans. Is that is that it? <laughs> I I mean, I guess. I like like who like what's the purpose? Why like the, I feel like they forget that they can book anything that they want. <laughs> you know what I mean? They like they control that. Like, wouldn't you give this guy a a win over someone? I don't know. Like, I don't know if Shingo is the guy that you get a, guy, a win over. Like, how about all right? If you're going to get a win, like Ishi, like that that seems like a like a, a guy that's perfectly fine losing. Um, it makes no sense to me. I'm going to be very honest. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would you book that match and unless Shingo is losing? Like Shingo winning makes no sense. Like, okay, great. You, we're, uh, I, I don't know. Am I, am I barking up the wrong tree here? No, it's a strange one. I, I mean, personally, I 
I'm happy that they're giving a big spot to Yu Young. I mean, regardless of the fact that he's almost certainly losing, the fact that they're showing faith in him to put him third from the top in a big singles match against high quality opposition, this is the sort of thing I want them to be doing with the young wrestlers. So, to be honest, I'm not going to fuss over this one too much because, okay. yeah, if they if you don't put them in these spots, how are they going to develop? So. Yeah, True. I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, then semi main event, we got the NJPW Strong Open Weight Title No Rope Last Man Standing Match. Eddie Kingston defending it against Gabe Kidd. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about if this gets too gimmicky. Oh, which this could easily get very silly and overindulgent and end up becoming farcical. But we'll see. I mean, I'll be sort of cautiously optimistic about this one because it looks fun on paper. Do you think Gabe's going to win this for this mega title reign that Eddie Kingston has, that Gabe is going to be the guy benefiting from it? Because no. he's as good a choice as any. What, what do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I yes, he is, but no, I don't. Like, I just don't, I don't see him, Eddie Kingston losing. I just don't. Um, and you're right, it can get a little like Self indulgent, <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, but in the same breath, like both guys, and we talked about Gabe a lot, but e- even to a certain degree, Eddie Kingston can give you that borderline dangerous match. And I think that's what they're going to try and shoot for with this. Uh, the no ropes, all that, you know, it, we'll see. Like, it's not, like, on paper, it's not giving me, you know, it's not getting me squeamish. I think there's plenty of, op- I don't know. Like, if I, I kind of, I kind of like it. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I like it. I like, I like this match on paper because I think both guys have a certain level of unpredictability that it can get. Yeah, you're right. It's going to walk a fine line between, again, self-indulgent. Uh, and well, fucking give me more. Um, and that, that might be what is the draw for me, like the excitement in it. Like, how are they going to straddle that line? Um, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they can. Uh, and I think this match will, will fucking deliver. Uh, again, it can, it could go sideways quick. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to have faith. I'm going to have faith in both of them. And the main event IWGP World Heavyweight Title match John Moxley versus Shota Umino. I think this is too early to be putting the trigger on the show to win. I think this is, you know, your, your Kikuchi storytelling where Shota gets bloodied up and comes close but no cigar and then you run this match back in a year or maybe two years and we can build up to having the payoff. I mean, really, this should be the thing where Moxley beats Shota again and again and again, and you really make the crowd desperate for that final show to win, and he can get it on a big stage. Maybe at the Tokyo Dome. I don't know, but I feel this is not the time or the place where Shota beats Moxley. That's what I'm afraid of. I gotta be honest with you, that's what I'm afraid of. Like, truth be told, I don't know if I want him to, to win this belt now. The problem is this: one, I I'm, I I lose faith in common sense and uh, what I kind of feel like should be done at every waking moment with this company. Um, my other fear is this too: like, do you really think Mox is going to hold on to this title that long? Like, I don't. I mean, maybe, but I I mean, it does seem like I know that we we all kind of point the finger like run this at the fucking dome and build it up and let you know there's there's plenty of fantasy booking out there and, and we've done our fair share of it i i have reservations that they would even they even have that in mind i hope that they have that in mind at this point it's fucking may um but i don't have any faith so mox is going to hold on to this title for that long okay Main event. There is a pre-baked storyline here. Uh, I think they would be rushing it. 
Absolutely. I, 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 I don't think it would be a good idea to do right now because all that, again, all that baked in history that you can milk for a good long time. And it should be milked for a long time. Like we're going, we're, we're, we're microwaving a meal here. Like we're not, we're not delivering the steak and we're not seasoning the potatoes. We're fucking putting it on a plate and putting it on high for five minutes. That's what we're doing. Um, if, if that's the plan, here's what scares me. U.S. kind of a decent crowd. You get the belt off Mox. Mox can go back home, do his AEW bullshit, and that's that. And then we have uh, a world champion who, you know, you look back, Hiroshi Tanahashi's first win was at 2016, 15. I don't know if anybody was like, I'm, and I'm trying to remember back, but it's not like there was this long fucking climb and it wasn't really the case. Now, again, is it different time, different place, different energy, different feeling for the company, all of that. I don't know, man. I, uh, I'm 60, 40 that Mox loses. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's uh, a lot higher than I'd be. I, I think he retains here and I could see someone like Zach, maybe even Naito again, coming to challenge after the show. Cause I'm just looking ahead at Dominion and Forbidden Door. And I think Mox probably continues to hold the title into one or both of those shows. Okay. He, let's say he retains here. Is Forbidden Door a good spot to drop the title? Yeah, rematch. if you want to plug in, well, you want to do a rematch? Why not do, why not do Zach beating Mox for the title at Forbidden Door? Because honestly, to me, if they do it right, there's more potential in Shota and Mox. If they do it right this match and they build it to be this kid came with it a fucking ass hair of beating Mox, his mentor. He got his ass kicked, but he fought. Um, and again, some, whatever it was that he lost, maybe he shouldn't have lost. And the rematch kind of brings that back. To me, that that means a little bit more than Zach coming out, calling him a fucking dickhead, pointing his finger at him and challenging. Right? Or no? Yeah. Um, again, I'm fantasy. I I, I, yeah, I, I see the value in that. And I think I agree with you in as much as I think Shota loses this match, but there's got to be some strong hooks for a rematch somewhere down strong. the line. Personally, I would save that rematch for a long, long way away. I just let it simmer and build up Shota in the meantime because he's not exactly done well, okay, he's not done anywhere near enough in kayfabe sense in New Japan to for him to be a credible world champion. So I think he's got to build, build up, build himself up domestically. So this match at Resurgence, what are you looking for? What you said, uh, close, competitive, uh, leave it all on the line, and he gets his ass kicked. I don't even know about coming close to winning, but just give 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 us a little story beat there. That something we could call back to mm -hmm. for future matches. Yeah, I would be thrilled with that. Like if if that show went off the air and and we got that, I would be doing cartwheels in the aisle. Yep. And then yeah, I think dialing it back to and bringing it back to running it back, whatever the fuck the saying is, at Forbidden Door might be a great idea. I mean, you could do Zach. I, I, and here's the thing: I got no fucking problem with that. Um, here's a dumb question. Forbidden Door, is that 
That's after G1, right? Uh, no, it's before G1. Right oh. before. So that's 30th of June, and G1 starts 20th of July. It is right in the middle of the New Japan Soul Tour, though. I don't know. Winner of G1 gets the shot, you know. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> is it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um and if we want to want to I mean, let's just say Zach wins. I mean, he's challenging at the dome, right? Uh So what you're saying is Zach doesn't win. Cuz why would he get back to back shots? I don't know. I've not really thought it through, Damon. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I don't know. I, I feel like Zach wins G1. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he hasn't won it. He's a guy that definitely should win it, can win it. It would be credible. He gets the shot. I don't know. I kind of feel like we have this space here with this researching show, Forbidden Door. We could have a nice little summer of of Shota and Mox fucking figuring it out. I don't I just don't here's the problem. I, I and I don't know. I, I trust me, I don't know. I just don't see Mox holding this title for that long. I, I I'm finding it hard to to swallow that he's gonna be the champion the remainder of this calendar year. I don't know. No, I, I don't think so either. I think he will either lose it at Dominion or Forbidden Door. Okay. Probably Dominion. Yeah, I think Dominion, but who knows? But that's how I would book it. All right, we'll take your calls after this on fantasy booking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, it is getting late, so let's yeah, just too. fast forward then and just touch on Best of Super Juniors because that is also kicking off this weekend. It is. So I would say like maybe we can aim to record next Tuesday so then we can discuss the first two nights of Best of the Super Juniors. So mm-hmm. we are opening up in... Chiba, where we've got uh, Francesco Akira versus Dragon Dyer, Bushi versus Hayata, Ninja Mac versus Robbie Eagles, Kosei Fujita versus Kanemaru, Driller Maloney versus Sho, Blake Christian versus Clark Connors, Doki against Taiji Ishimori, Kevin Knight versus TJP, Kushida versus Hiromu, mm-hmm. our favorite, with all that history they got together, Rematch. and main event, love this, uh, El Desperado versus Titan. So yeah, that's a, I think that's, that's a really solid. strong first show. Like those top. Four yeah. matches. I'm into those. That's good. No shit. doubt. That on paper, that's fucking. Then, that's a nice way to start. All right. What's next? Night two. Korak and Hall. We've got Kevin Knight versus Blake Christian. Francesco Akira versus Ninja Mac. Hayata versus Clark Connors. Robbie Eagles versus Driller Maloney. I like that. That should be good. TJP versus Kanemaru. Dragon Diet versus Taiji Ishimori. Bushi versus Titan. Kushida versus Sho. El Desperado versus Kosei Fujita and Hiromu Takahashi versus Doki, which a great choice Ooh. to be made of a Koraku and Hall. So, yeah, I like this. I mean, I've, we've not really given Best of Super Juniors the attention that it probably deserves because it's just it just feels like the events are coming so thick and fast. I mean, we've got this fucking all together show that we can't talk about because neither of us have seen it because he can't find the damn thing for love nor money. Uh, and here we are sort of trying to crowbar in best of the super juniors previews and predictions uh, at the end of a show when I really want to go to bed. But right. these, these are two pretty pretty tasty shows on paper. I mean, I don't really know what level of predictions and analysis we can do at this stage. I mean, do you have any early predictions on block winners, possible finalists, possible winners for the, the tournament? No, Brit large. I, I really don't, and I think that's a good thing. Like, yeah, like, all the names, like the talent is. It, you know, when you read off that th- these two shows, like I'm like my heart's racing. I'm like, all right, this is this is some good stuff, and we got people that we haven't seen in a long time in the New Japan ring. No, I I, I don't, and I I hope they continue with that level of unpredictability and i think they broke the mold with the uh like like a, a guy like teton making it to the final i think that's that's the way we need to go we need to have that level of discomfort and unpredictability to grow let's do it um so no i don't but on paper those two shows 
Joe, oh, those are solid fucking shows. They they could deliver. Both of those shows could deliver top to bottom. There's no reason why these shows should be even re- remotely average. Like they're good. And what a way to kick it off. Let's do it. Let's fucking go this weekend. It's, it has flown under the radar. That is for fucking sure. Um, but gear up. I'm ready for it. Fucking get excited for it. Jump in. Yeah, I was just sort of looking ahead for the the last two nights as well, which uh, are Coracle and Hall. So the A block final night, we got Kosei Fujita versus Blake Christian, Clark Connors versus Kanemaru, Despi versus Hayata, Titan versus TJP, and Kevin Knight versus Bushi. And looking at that, I'd imagine Despi. You would think. You'd, you'd think he's going through to the semi finals. And then I'd be looking at Titan versus TJP. Probably winner of that's going through. Yeah. So yeah. maybe with all the shine that TJP is getting. Like I prefer T Tan to be going through, but it wouldn't shock me if you know, we've got TJP and Despi going through from the A block, and then the B block final night we've got Kushida versus Dragon Dyer, Doki versus Robbie Eagles, Francesco Akira versus Sho, Hiromu versus Taiji Ishimori, and Ninja Matt versus Drill and Maloney. Uh, so it's the Akira, Akira? versus Sho yeah. and Hiromu versus Ishimori that are standing out to me as being your, your decisive matches. Like winner goes through, maybe you- Akira. Akira and Hiromu, I think. I, 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 yeah, let's let's see what we've got for Francesco Akira. He doesn't have to win the whole tournament, but 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 could we possibly get a Akira TJP? No, I think the play is to have your semi-finals Despi versus Akira because they had a great match in last year's tournament. Yeah, so we can have Despi versus Akira on one side, and then the other semi-final. I don't know, TJP versus Hiromu. Take I, it from there. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I think the, the idea of former tag team partners finding a way to get in there, I like that. No? You're not into it? Yeah, no. I, 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 yeah. Why uh-huh. not? I mean, they're both really good wrestlers. And yeah. you know, for as much as this Uswang stuff isn't my cup of tea. No? Um, you don't he, like he can still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope he's not he's not going heavy on that in this tournament because he's he's a bloody good wrestler. Whatever else yeah. you might say about him, he doesn't need that. I know he wants to do it, like he fucking gets a boner doing it, but like you don't need it, pal. <laughs> you don't need it. All right, that looks good. I like that. All right, are you sleepy yet or what? What are we doing? Yeah, I'm sleepy. All right, go to I'm bed. Sleepy. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. wrap this fucking. Poor shit up this piece of shit <laughs> podcast. <laughs> All right, here we go. Amen to that. Okay, so redsoggle.com forward slash shows forward slash super dash j dash cast. Now, I did say five five dollars or five pounds per month, not one off donation. Come on, don't be stingy. This, this, yeah. this, this money counts. I've got a family of four to support on my shit salary. This, yeah. this, is, this is important. So five pounds slash dollars per month, please. And and uh, I promise I, w- I won't ban you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, Cobra Kawaii, Pro Wrestling Tees.com, Force Us, Super J Cast, T shirts. Thanks, Dan. Twitter at Lives Hero 219. We're on Twitter at Super J Cast. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And goodbye. <laughs>